now. All right, hello everyone. This is a special follow-up interlude, so to speak, as both the USS Nighthawk and Cerberus Station had a New Year's Day 2406 adventure. Both captains wanted to have a quick sit-down chat. So, uh, we are going to have that right here, especially on YouTube. Uh, this, this takes place just after the USS Nighthawk returns from its temporally charged mission in the uh, that sort of went south in the Transwarp Hub. You guys have just emerged from the Transwarp Hub explosion out of, I believe it was Gate 24. And the station has just uh, given you clearance to dock. And with that said, you guys can take it away. Uh, I would assume that mm, this entire conversation will take place in uh, Crawford's ready room. So Okay, we can certainly do that. Let's go to the ready room. Uh, let's see. Captain's office, there we go. All right, Captain Crawford, you're busy filing all of the uh, mandatory reports that Starfleet requires for any contact with the Q. When Captain Singral uh, signals to enter your room. Uh, come in, Captain. I'll go ahead and step through the door here and go ahead and take a seat. What time of day would it be? Uh, it is roughly, I believe it would be about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, good afternoon, Captain. I see that you're buried in, with yourself with a bunch of data pads here. You have more action while we were away. Um, yes, we encountered a... ...schedule by the name of Q. Are we talking about... The Q. The actual Q. If you're speaking of the one that has been encountered on the Enterprise and Voyager, then yes. Starfleet Intelligence has a file so big on that entity, it's absolutely unreal. It's crazy that even some of these parts are just redacted, but it, when I was looking at it, they just, they just snicker and laugh when I ask. I don't understand what this big inside joke is, but whatever it is, I guess whatever Captain Picard encountered on the Enterprise, there are just some things that he doesn't want to talk about. Listen, for the moment, I'm not wanting to speak about our encounter with him either. So, uh, how did it go? <laughs> well, honestly, Captain, and I'm going to lean in a little bit closer. It went very poorly. Our mission, oh, so. <laughs> our mission wasn't necessarily what you would call a direct success, even though you sent us out to see if we can to see if we could uncover any evidence. What happened was a mishmash of temporal events. To be clear, before I continue, did Cerberus Station ever receive any communique from the Nighthawk? They did not. Oh, well, that's not necessarily too surprising, considering that the, the situation that we found ourselves in. To put it simply, the Nighthawk found itself encountered in a temporal event that sent us briefly about a hundred or so years into the past. We almost brought back the Borg, and we almost made them a presence again in this quadrant. Gate, the Borg transport gate that you saw us fly out of that has just collapsed, was a means to an end. Unfortunately, we had to use a heavy armament to make sure the sphere that followed us wasn't able to return or send any other messages to whatever collective may or may not yet still be lurking here among us. See, um, if you encountered a time when you were sent well over a hundred years back, then how did you make it back here? Luckily, I do have some very capable science officers on board this vessel. 
my chief science officer did manage to remodulate our shielding and jump our impulse engines in a way that allowed us to cause a temporal resonance effect that allowed us to jump to warp and jump back to this point in time, roughly, while we were still within the transwarp network. Unfortunately, while we did that, we also caught the eyes of a Borg a sphere that was also within the network at that point in time. I I don't I don't mean to sugarcoat anything. It was nearly Wolf 359 all over again, and that was not something I'm, I'm prepared to face. I'm glad to see that the <coughs> Nighthawk seemed to make it back in one piece. Uh, did the officer I sent with you, uh, Specialist Nia, serve any benefit to your crew? Specialist Nia was indeed quite helpful. And he most definitely has the ability to take great initiative. You should be proud. Glad to hear. Seems like for what he's done on the station so far and his contributions to both your crew and what he's somewhat discovered about the Jin Soul, it seems like he might have earned himself an actual commission. Well, I mean, if he was on my ship, he would certainly be within his rights. We could probably talk about his congeniality a little bit better, but regardless of which, that's neither here nor there at the moment. <laughs> he'll he'll raise a curious eyebrow at that statement. In any case, um, Captain was a smile and just, and just say, well, there's nothing to it. Either way, you have yourself the makings of a fine officer here. And such things should be rewarded. I to hear that, Captain. Since you had your own temporal thing, we actually had a similar case here on the station that also involved the Transwarp Hub. Um, We had a device that had apparently been quote-unquote draining time from and that included the station we for whatever reason encountered some officers that had been quite frankly they were off the station for four months at this point but they were still here but they were themselves from four months ago. It was interesting. So you're telling me that on board the station there was actual temporal reversion within the officers themselves? Y y to an extent. But, uh, McCall, remind me what was the name of the, not necessarily the individual, but the species? Uh, of uh, oh you, sorry, go ahead. You didn't encounter. Uh, you didn't learn the species name. And what was the individual's name? It was like Zalfir Zephala, or something. Uh, Zafala, Zephala. I believe the name was. Faller. Okay. We uh, traced the source of this back to a planet with a civilization long thought dead, save for one survivor who wanted to use this device to somehow bring his civilization back. And seeing as how that was a eh, violation of the temporal prime directive of altering history, I couldn't stand by and I ordered the device to be destroyed and all seemed to return to normal. Do you still have the tricorder readings and data analysis of this device at all? Um, I believe I do. Those would be in Lieutenant Commander Keevan and most likely Ensign Usha's reports, and I'll forward, to, eh, forward those to you just as soon as I can. Considering that these events are taking place so closely to each other, 
I'm going to go and have say this isn't a coincidence. Oh, what was the end of that? It cut off for me a bit. Uh, I was going to say, considering that these events happened so closely to each other and they were both temporal in nature, I don't expect this to be a coincidence. Yeah. In chance you think we might need to call the uh, investigations into this? Well, the Department of Temporal Investigations is going to be alerted regardless, but before we actually send their emissaries to the station, I'd actually like, if you don't mind, the crew of the Nighthawk, I have some science personnel that do have specializations within temporal mechanics, and along with my intelligence officers, to gather a little bit more, a finely detailed report. We do have the ability to collect vast amounts of information considering a position in a short amount of time. And whatever the Department of Temporal Investigations is going to be concerned with is nothing that we can't handle. And I'd like to get a lead on this before any possible DTI charges come up, so to speak. Uh, I, I think that... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I don't necessarily think that paperwork is the best use of our time in this scenario right now. It will only slow us down, if you understand my meaning. I can certainly agree with that. Um, please uh, have some of your crew do some of that information gathering. And uh, There are a few officers here on the station that can most likely help. Uh, our chief medical officer, uh, Commander Arya, has some background in intelligence. Uh, Usha is one of the only temporal mechanics specialists that we have here on the station. And in terms of in just pure intelligence, there's a Lieutenant Junior Grade Marcus Klein that you might want to speak to as well. At this point in time, Captain, I may need to inform you that I think it's best for us to raise the heightened alertness level for the Lasai Expanse for the time being. Even though these temporal events, as far as we know right now, have centered around Federation events, that doesn't necessarily mean that any other Lasai Expanse species could have been involved with some of these events that have most recently transpired. We really don't know anything about the rest of them, whether about the Jinsul or the Vitaires, and whether or not they actually have access to temporal technology that could actually be manipulating these events is honestly still something that could be called into question. Unfortunately, like I said, the Nighthawks investigation yielded no leads at the moment. So this is something we should work to rectify post-test. Of course, I'll uh, pass along that information to our chief security officer. We'll remain on high alert, but... Um, yeah, we'll just certainly have to be on our guard. Well, I mean, if there's anything else that we need to talk about, the the boring temporal stuff, that's one thing. But honestly, Captain, what I find most curious and what I'm really interested in is that even it's after Christmas now and the Nighthawk's back. Where's my present? <laughs> um, Man, even though we had talked about this on the Nighthawk game... <laughs> I didn't have time to think about what I would get for this good captain. Um, well, I know oh. what I got you. And I'm going to reach behind myself and pull out a little box. Go ahead and open it, captain. It's my gift to you. And shocked, but he will open the box. And what is inside it? So the package, the box has two layers. First one is a watch. First one is Terrible. what? You cut off again. Oh, sorry, the, first one, the first one is a watch. <laughs> Terrible <laughs> sense of humor. Let's see. But underneath the watch is a Christmas ornament, and, which bears the Nighthawk insignia. But it's an optical illusion. So if Ooh. you did put it on your tree, it would be hard to see. 
It shows itself uh, that it needs to. Okay. <laughs> I I love it. I love it. Um, remind me what species Sengral is. He is half trill, half Midza. Okay, gotcha. Um, let's see. Crawford will pull out what will probably be a not exactly long, but it's not a uh, short box either, and kind of slide it over. Uh, oh, okay. and... Captain, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Well, apparently, since you got something for me, it was only fair that I did the same for you. Before well, you open this, I might ask, are you much of the drinking sort, Captain? No. It interferes with, uh, unfortunately, it just it doesn't necessarily sit well with my system, and it interferes with the symbiont. I'm kidding, I have no symbiont. I'm totally messing with you. I love to drink. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Good. In that case, this isn't going to waste. Um, Ox, there's there's a couple assorted bottles. Um, one would probably be a rather fine uh, Beta Z Mead. Probably more expensive than you were... Well, expensive being a different term now, but... Uh, rather rare bottle, and then the other is a, uh, bottle of, like, a Trill wine. So, what's the joke here? Am I supposed to mix these two things together, Captain? Um, not that I'm aware of. I rarely drink myself. I just thought I would get something to... Honor both of the species that you are? Uh, neither of these things are strong enough, but I'll take them nonetheless. And just because I find it humorous, the box, uh, as the Captain Singral takes the box, a second box, a wrapped box, appears just underneath them. It says, To Captain Singral from Q. So please tell me that this is another one of your tricks here. I regret to say that it's not. Well, I'm going to go grab the nearest tricorder and scan this box before I open it. <laughs> uh, the box reads as roughly as a small wooden container about five centimeters uh, in diameter and half or uh, no, sorry, five inches in diameter and roughly three inches thick. It is a primarily wood and metal based contraption. It is not going to explode. Regardless of which, I'd like to do a security test on it. Okay. <laughs> I just want to do a quick check. <laughs> Inside security, <laughs> difficulty of one. Uh, covert operations or something along those lines would work. Uh, package inspection would also be a good focus. <laughs> Boxing day? <laughs> yes. One momentum, if we care to keep track. Uh, it appears to be a compass. Very ornate one, I must add. Can I determine the uh, the design or maybe like the world of origin here? Uh, it appears to be very similar to those that the ancient trill of uh, the first trill space spacefarers took with them into space as a good luck charm. Um, it points it as magnetic north, south, east, west. Naturally, doesn't really work in space, but they kept, they were very superstitious at the time. Well, and I'm going to just raise my voice a, bit, a little bit and just look up at the ceiling. Thank you, regardless. It's very thoughtful. Even if I didn't ask for it. But those are the best types of presents. But the least, the, it's not necessarily one that you should bring on an intelligence officer. I'd still like to know what was coming beforehand. Silence greets you. I didn't expect a response. At least 
apparently your encounter with Q was benevolent. If we're going to call this my first encounter with Q, then most definitely. My first and only so far. But it's see, I just hope it doesn't become a pattern. Which I've definitely just jinked myself there. GM laughter in the distance. <laughs> I certainly hope he enjoyed his stay here. He treated the place like it was a resort rather than a space station. I, are you telling me that it's not? I mean, it's not anymore, but... Let's just say he turned one of our docking bays into an airport terminal. Oh, well, I mean... Honestly, uh, the place could do with a little window dressing regardless. But maybe not to the extent that I could see with the mounting frustration upon your face. Oh, Captain, is there anything else that you would need from me? Well, I have my present, I have my compass, and I have the station and the expanse in one piece. So I don't need anything else from you at the moment. Oh, I don't have anything else for you, so if... You want to, you're more than free to stay on the station as long as you need, but uh, safe travels. Safe travels, Captain. Be well. And on that note, that sounds like a good place to stop. So, anyone listening on YouTube, it's been a good uh, first half of Season 2 for Nighthawk and Cerberus. Uh, we shall see where these guys and their respective crews go in 2020, or 2406, depending on which timeline you choose to follow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.